Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Entrepreneurship Facts. Today, I have a special guest for all of you. His name is Dan McCabe, and he's a speaker, and he's a real estate investor, and consulting. People pay him hundreds of thousands of dollars to learn from him because of all the deals he has done in the past. So he's here today to drop some knowledge bomb to all of you. Hopefully you take something valuable out of it. So Dan, why don't you tell my audience a bit about yourself? Hey, you know, first of all, thanks for having me, Dave. This is this is fun, so I appreciate what you guys are doing. In any way I can uh, serve you guys, um, more than happy to do it. So um, just kind of tell them about myself. Sorry, what was the question again? Tell about myself and where <laughs> yeah. we came from. Talk about yeah, what been... you do and what gets you to your current business. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, I've been investing in real estate since I was 19 years old. So I'm 41 now. So 22 years, um, we've been doing some form of real estate investment. We've done tens of millions of dollars in deals. And one of the things I learned in real estate is that we always kind of just go with the flow, go with the market. There's always money there to be made for sure. Um, in 2011, we started doing a lot of speaking and training on the topics of real estate and real estate and entrepreneurship, because really at the end of the day, I'm an entrepreneur to the core. And I was doing a lot of big speaking events. We were hosting our own events and charging people quite a bit of money for coaching. And one of the things I learned through that process is that a lot of people were jumping into it too soon. They were jumping into it because they saw the fancy shows on TLC and the Discovery Channel. And they were like, I can do that. That's easy. And I can go make $40,000. That's what I make in a year. And now I can do it in like three days, according to the TV. And so they were jumping into it really fast. And... I'm watching these people and we also have a you know regular monthly real estate association here in town as well and I'm, I'm watching them and then I was watching them come back and the success rate of the people that were running out there and risking everything they had just wasn't as high as it should be and a lot of that had to do with they're just jumping in too hard too fast so we've created um, within our business model now we bring people back to like square square one square one and whether you know whatever that is to start helping people build some kind of passive residual income some kind of disposable discretionary income because we want them to do real estate we just want them to do it the right way okay i see and so what what would be your number one advice for people who want to jump into real estate well whether it's real estate entrepreneurship my number one piece of advice is to to not jump off a cliff you know to, don't go so big at the beginning a lot of people come through the events and come through the seminars and they think i need to go all in i need to shove all my chips in the middle if i'm going to be successful with this like i'm going to be successful with this i gotta do it all right away so we really try and train people to go back you know to the very very beginning of like just basic business skills and yep. we use tools like affiliate marketing like i know you're involved with network marketing and we take them back to things that they can invest a few hundred dollars in, like relatively cheap. And they can start acquiring those skills and start building some income because if they really want to get into real estate investing, I, I advise people not to do it unless they have the money to lose to do it because it, it can be incredibly risky. And one of the things that attracts people to real estate is the fact that I can get, go to the bank and I can get these big loans so I can do these big deals and I can get the big paychecks of the profits. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, what they don't understand is that if you do it wrong, if you screw something up, if you open up a wall and you find three dead raccoons, which has happened to me, um, all of a sudden you're replacing the entire wall and you're losing money on the project. Like with, big, with potential big profits, there's also potential big losses. So we, we bring big people back to more basic business skills first. And that's, that's what I try to do. Like if my number one piece of advice is start getting some, you know, start building something small first. Like start, start, start super small. Yep. Don't worry about the big profits. Build organically and build over time. I've been around this business for a long time and I've seen way too many people like go like this and then straight down. But the people that have had the most success and make the most money right now are the people that created this steady growth over a period of 10 years. And the results that they have now are incredible, amazing. So what are those skills that you're talking about? Well, the basic skills that, you know, something like network marketing, which I'm a big fan of, um, you know, I'm also a, you know, closet prolific network marketer. You know, we talk about that a fair amount now on our podcast, things like that. But it's, it's basic business skills, understanding your income, your revenue, your expenses, how to sell, not even how to sell, but how to present, how to offer something, how to share something, how to start transferring your belief in what it is that you're doing to somebody else so that they want to come with you. Transferring the dream that you have and helping 
convey that message in a way that it encompasses their dreams to where they also want to come with you for that. Like, what can we do to start doing that? Because when you can get good at that, whether it's at a network marketing level, mm -hmm. and I use network marketing as an example a lot because it's such an easy place for people to start. And I just, I love the industry because of the alignment it creates between everybody. Um, <clears throat> but whether it is at that level that you are having to transfer this belief or these dreams that you have, or if you're going out to do a one and a half million dollar real estate deal, the mechanics of it are the same. And I need to know how to do that. If I'm going to go do the one and a half million dollar real estate deal with none of my own money, I need to be able to transfer my dream, my vision for that project to my investor, yeah. to the person I'm purchasing from, to the buyer that's going to buy the property, to the potential renters. Like you need to, you need to have that skill first. And if you try and get into these big real estate projects, even if it's a $200,000 project or something that would be considered relatively small in today's market, there's still big money and big numbers involved. You need to be able to transfer and share that vision yep. and network marketing, affiliate marketing, learning the basics. I hate using the word selling, but I mean, it's kind of what it is. It's, but it's sharing and presenting in a way that transfers that belief. So um, does that answer your question there? Yes, no, definitely. Yep. No, at first I was like, how does network marketing has anything to do with investing in real estate? That was the question. And I'm like, okay, now yeah. it's totally Tony Sen because like, you need negotiation, you need the communication skill and understand profit, expense, manage your business. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that you need to know when starting right. and running a business, right? No, I totally agree with you. And you can start it for $300 as opposed to $30,000 with the potential to lose a lot more. So, so what's your thought on this? I think there's some a slight negative stigma around network marketing. What's your thought on that? Yeah, that's, that's also the positive because if you can transfer that belief, you're doing really good. Okay. <laughs> doing a million dollar real estate deals easy you know there it, depending on where you're at there is there are negative stigmas around and you need to work around that and a, the easiest way i tell people to do that is a lot of times people that have trouble um overcoming that particular objection is because they believe that there's something negative so they need to work on their own belief system first. And that's going to be true in network marketing. That's going to be true in the real estate deal. You need to fully believe in everything that it is that you're doing. You need to believe in yourself. You need to believe in a company that you represent. You need to believe in a product. You need to believe in the leadership. You need to believe in the industry. So some people watching this might you know, already have a negative feeling about network marketing because of a presentation they went to or their uncle who lost money. But at the same time of that happening, there is, a, there is an older lady somewhere in the United States driving down the freeway in a pink Cadillac because Mary Kay paid her a million dollars. You know, network marketing has been around for 130 years. One of the biggest ways to overcome this objection, this stigma around network marketing, and what, the way I learned to do it once upon a time, was just to start spitting out and understanding all the network marketing facts. It's been around for 130 years since Avon um, originally was founded. There's over 18 million people in the U.S. that are involved. It's heavily, heavily regulated in the United States, in the United States anywhere, and in Canada, actually. I know you're from Canada. It's mm -hmm. actually more regulated there. So you, you just need to understand the facts around the industry. How long has it been around? How do they police it these days? A lot of the negativity came from prior to there being regulation of the industry. It's just taken a couple decades to get that to wear off. All right, I see. So how can somebody get started and what's the number one, like, what do they need to get started? Uh, when it comes to network marketing, real estate, what, where do you uh, want network to go? Network marketing. Business in general. Network, network marketing. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things that I have always done, I think it's important for people to research the industry. They got to get their belief done in the industry first. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just for people that are listening to this, one of the reasons why I love the industry is just the alignment that it creates. I can bring somebody in on my team or they can, that person can bring somebody in on our team and I can go out there and truly just support and help that person. I can go into it with this mindset of all I need to do is help that person achieve their dreams and my paycheck goes up. And at the same time, one of the things I like about it more than doing the big coaching packages, like you mentioned in the intro, we, we were selling $100,000 real estate coaching packages. One of the things I like about network marketing is it creates this alignment where I only get paid if I do help them. So what's a good way for people to get started? There's a few things you need to look at. If, if you're going to join a network marketing company, understand the industry first. Mm -hmm. Do some research on the company and the leadership, like the executive leadership of the company. 
and then also start doing some research on whose team you want to be on and the leader you want to have within that team. Okay. Because most of the training, most of the way people can make money in network marketing is by having a good support system of leadership that is their actual team, not just the executive training. You know, it's um, a lot of times people get into network marketing because their cousin invites them to a coffee shop and shows them a presentation. But then all of a sudden your cousin who might not know anything about network marketing is your go-to resource for education and business advice. So I try to, I try to get people to think about it as a business decision more so than an emotional decision and just really find yourself the right situation that you can, you can get into to best place yourself for success. Okay, so pretty much inform yourself with knowledge and information about whatever that is you're trying, you're getting into, right? Right. It's kind of like it's kind of the same thing I was saying about real estate. It's like you don't need to jump in tomorrow. They always give you this whole fear of loss thing that like you need to get in now so you get the next best spot on my team before I stick six more people in tomorrow. But really, at the end of the day, you just want to put yourself in the best place to succeed. That has training systems and support systems to help you grow, especially if you've never done it before. You know, a lot of times, like, you know, in that example I gave where your cousin brings you in, what training systems do they have? What knowledge do they have? What are your chances of success if you're learning from somebody who hasn't been successful in it already? Okay. So, so I mean, we spoke a little bit about the mindset and the negative stigma about network marketing. How would mm -hmm. you break that down for somebody who already have that negative stigma? How will you help that person break the false belief that they have? You know, one of the best things that we have done with people that come through our community and some of our we do a lot of online marketing for network marketing and things like that and we drive people through um, our websites <clears throat> and one of the things I have people do instead of me trying to break that stigma for them is um, we, we do these different challenges and things like that and we'll send them off on their own and say I want you to go to the internet and go find 10 facts about the industry and we have them go out and do their own research about the industry and we tell them to keep an open mind, find the good, the bad, and bring it back to us. And the people that I would want to work with on my team anyways, they're going to go do that homework because they're legitimately interested. It doesn't take that long. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of go through that. I have found that more often than not, they find more positive facts than they find negative facts. And if somebody comes at you with too many negative facts, chances are it's going to be hard, hard to change that person anyways. I mean, there's skeptics in this world. There's always going to be. And you just need to decide where that threshold is for yourself on whose, whose mind do you want to try and help shape, I guess. I don't want to change their mind, but, yeah. you know, who do we want to educate? But, you okay. know, facts and numbers solve a lot of problems. Okay, I see. No, that, that makes sense. How did you get into network marketing? I know you mentioned you was in real estate at first. Mm -hmm. What was the story that actually got you into network marketing? We still do real estate. Just on a, I do it on a lesser degree now. Okay. Um, for multiple different reasons. I would say one of the big reasons was we had um, we had an employee. So this was a number of years ago. We had an employee that stole a lot of money from us. Okay. And, you know, that's unfortunate. But it happens. I mean, you do enough business and enough deals, negative things are going to happen from time to time. But it, what got me into it at the time was that we, we were doing a ton of real estate, but this had just happened to us. And I was dealing with these negative experiences that were going on in my own life. Um, that's a really crazy story. That's probably a whole nother YouTube interview some other day. <laughs> but um, the, at the same time, like it was like two days later, um, an old buddy of mine, Eric, who used to be a real estate guy in uh, Minnesota where I'm from as well, um, he came to me and he had been doing network marketing for the previous eight years. He had reached you know, top five income status in his company. He's making over $100,000 a month. And he, like, he introduced what he was doing to me. And to tell you the truth, what got me into it was running away from the negative thing, even for a brief period of time. I'm like, that thing's really negative. I can go sell a bunch of these, make some money. But at the same time, it was those really quick wins. These like fast little small wins got me emotionally back to the level that I needed to be to perform. Because, it, you know, in all honesty, like when that guy was stealing from us and it, it set us back and it was it was hard to deal with like mm -hmm. that's, that kind of stuff weighs on you it knocks you down and sometimes you need this positive stuff real estate um real estate can be very profitable and we did very well in real estate um you know over the last couple of decades and i'm very thankful for that but 
something that a lot of people won't tell you about it is that it's typically and can be a very negative world. And network marketing is typically a positive world because I only get paid if I help somebody else make money. Real estate, the, the reason I say it's kind of a negative world is because I'm all like, I would wake up in the day or wake up in the morning and try to figure out which fire do I want to put out today? Which subcontractor do I need to argue with today? Who do I need to beat up on price? Who do I need to say their title job is not good enough? Which buyer is being too much of a pain in the butt because the shade of yellow they picked for their house isn't quite the shade they thought it was on that little piece of paper? You know, it's kind of this constant stream, especially when you're doing a lot of deals, of just having to deal with and solve problems. And if that's okay. I mean, we're working. It's part of what we need to do. But at the same time, that, that was a, lot, a large part of the transition I made was kind of when, after my buddy Eric and I met and I got into that world and I realized how positive it was on a regular basis and being around, you know, so many entrepreneurs that were all just kind of running towards this euphoric place and had these dreams, you know, it was, it was just a more fun place to play. So we spent a lot of time there. At the same time, I knew that if they screwed it up, like a lot of people do and they failed and they never succeeded, which, which just happens. That's the reality of any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that really want it are going to get it. But for the people that fail, they lost like 300 bucks. You know, they're not going to be laying on their deathbed yeah. 35 years from now looking up being like, man, I wish I hadn't spent that 300 bucks. You know, whereas if they lose 30, 40, $50,000 on a deal, that could theoretically devastate a lot of people. Yeah. So, in fact, I know some people that's devastating. It's hard. It's hard to watch. No, that that makes sense. No, I totally agree with you. Okay, so for network marketing, for those for those who doesn't know how it works or is what it is, can you briefly explain what network marketing is and the structure or the basic of it, so somebody like a five years old could understand? <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, network marketing gets confused with a lot of different things out there. Yeah. At the end of the day, network marketing is just a way that a company markets their product. So a typical company, something that you would, everybody would know, like an Amazon, you know, yeah. they mark Amazon markets on TV commercials. They market all over the place. They have a marketing budget set aside for their company. And that's how they market and get their stuff out there. A network marketing company simply takes whatever that marketing budget would be and pays it out to um, distributors within their network. So they have individuals like myself or people on my team go out and it's more word of mouth. We talk to people, we find other people that talk to people and we just spread the word. And then instead of them paying marketing and commercials, they pay all the independent representatives commission. So mm -hmm. I don't think a five-year-old is going to get that, but I'm hoping most of your listeners are over 13 and they get it at least. <laughs> now, okay. That, 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 that makes sense for sure. Okay. And what would you say is the, the key thing for any, for somebody to succeed in network marketing? What is the one key thing that they need? It is consistency and habits. And I, I will actually say that for just about any business. So okay. being consistent is the number one thing that people need to figure out how to maintain. Success isn't built by short-term burst of activity. It is built mm -hmm. by consistent activity done over and over and over and over and over again until it gets boring. And then you do it over and over and over and over again until it gets really boring, but you just keep doing it and yeah. plodding along and growing. So it, most of this stuff isn't rocket science. It's not really hard. It is just, it's hard for people to maintain that kind of consistency. Uh, people are always trying to look for kind of that new thing that they can run out there with when really most of the success is going to come from doing and saying old things over and over again to new people. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So right. you have to stay consistent, practice, improve your skill. Cause every day when you first start, you're probably going to be stuck at it. Right. You're not going to be, be horrible. Yes. Yeah, so if you stick with it, so the first, if you do it for a hundred, first hundred people, most like you're probably not going to be able to convert a lot of them, but if you keep doing it to maybe two, 300, four, 500 people, then you get, eventually you get better and your conversion rate will be much higher as you do it. Oh, absolutely true. And you can always make up for sucking at something by doing it a lot. Yeah. So, I guess, you know, if you, you, you can be the worst salesperson in the world, but if you talk to the most people, you're going to win. So, 
would okay would you call it a, a number game in a sense it can be i mean all of this stuff really is is it a numbers game I'm, I, I was more using that example as a really really good network marketer a really good person out there who's a leader in their company they could close 50 to 60 percent of the people they talk to so if they talk to 100 people they might sign up 60 people well somebody brand new might only be able to close 10 percent of them so they talk to 100 people and they only sign up 10 people but if that person talks to a thousand people in the same amount of time that that leader talked to 100 mm -hmm. they're going to sign up 100 people and win so you make up for it by doing more volume until you get better and you get more efficient. But it, at the beginning and up front, just that consistent activity every day. And I use this example and feel free to like, you know, this, this is how I would explain this to a five-year-old. So go with me on it. Hang with me for like two yeah. seconds on this. I coached my son's little league team this summer. So they're 10 year olds. And we would hit ground ball after ground ball after ground ball to these kids. And then they would get to the game and they would miss the ground ball. And one of the other coaches said to me one day, and I had this epiphany, like at that moment, he's like, we told them how to do that. Get your glove out, get your back straight, bend over, you know, you know, two hands, alligator, all this stuff. And I was like, you know, they really just need to get the reps in. We can tell them exactly what to do. But until they go take 10,000 ground balls, they're not going to start catching them consistently. It's the same thing in business life and network marketing. Like you're going to go out there and you're going to screw up those first handful of presentations. But if you go give 10,000 presentations, you're going to get better at it and you're going to consistently start closing people. Now, the problem comes, that 10-year-old kid, those kids I was coaching, they didn't care that they sucked. They just wanted to go take another ground ball. They desired to get back in line and get back to the front so they could take another one and they could keep getting better at it. When we become grown-ups, we get skittish and scared and we realize we suck. And when we suck at something, all of a sudden we feel that. Like if we do a bad job, even if the person didn't necessarily tell us we did, we feel like we did, it makes it harder for us to want to get back in line and do it again. So sorry, I'm kind of taking over the interview here. I got one more story that I think could help people, especially people getting into network marketing. So this is like one of my first presentations ever. Is it okay if I tell it? Yeah, for sure. Okay. The, um, so one of my first presentations ever when I was like, this was a long time ago. This was before my previous experience five, six years ago when I met Eric. Like 12 years ago, I owned a real estate brokerage and we got into a small network marketing company where we were helping people pay off their mortgages faster. Anyways, I believed in the product. I believed in the numbers. I sucked at public speaking. I was horrible at it. Like, I had these, I remember six people came to my office and I was doing a presentation and I literally got that cotton mouth thing. Like, I don't know if you ever had that where you're public speaking, you're like, oh, God, God. like you can't get yeah. words out, your mouth gets so dry and I'm struggling. I could not drink a big enough glass of water. I was through this glass of water by like the third slide and all of a sudden I had no more water. I'm panicking. I got no more water. My throat's too dry. I can't do this. And like, that's what was going on in my head. But like I toughed out, I fought through it. The entire presentation, those six people were so intently watching everything that I did. And I believe that was because people, humans in general, are compassionate people. And they could see me struggling. And therefore, they paid attention. And they like um, stuck it out and you know supported me through this process, realizing that I was going through it. So I got through that. I remember, I think I sold like three or four of them on the product. So like that part was a win and that part was good. And that was a, that was a step I needed to take in the evolution of business and career and speaking. I can go and speak to a room of a hundred people. Now I have no problems. I've gotten a lot better at it and I'm a lot more comfortable. But at the same time, if I look out in the audience, how many people do I see on their phones going like this? How many people are unengaged, not paying attention? So like, so I, I tell people on our team, um, within our network marketing business, things like that, I'm like, go out there and suck because when you suck, people pay attention. Yeah. As soon as you get really good and polished, eh, they start, you know, kind of wandering off a little bit. But in general, people are supportive. And I think back to those six people, there is not one of those six people but, but today that remembers being in that meeting with me in that room, whereas somehow I can still remember it. But, you know, what, what was really lost? Say I never did anything again after that. Not like those six people are wandering, wandering around this world right now. Like, man, you guys remember that day Dan sucked at a presentation? So anyways, hopefully, hopefully that helps somebody with something. Yeah, that's a very interesting point. Thank you for sharing that for sure. Yeah.
Well, I guess we are pretty much near the end, at very close to the 30 minutes mark already. So is there any last thing you would like to tell my audience? Or uh, if they want to find out more about you, where can they find you? Ah, that's a really good question. Um, so we do, I mean, yeah, they can find us all over the place. So if they want to look up Residual Bulldog on iTunes, we have a podcast there called Residual Bulldog. That's our company name now. Um, for families, we, we've taken a big focus these days as well. Um, we want to help grownups start building a residual income and get into real estate at some point. But we like to take them through this network marketing journey first if they haven't done anything else, because I think it takes makes a lot more sense. Um, also just a passion project of mine that would be great if people could check out is, um, we have a wealth smart kids podcast that we recently launched where we talk about, um, you know, well, we do a few things. We teach grownups, but we also teach parents how to teach their kids about money because I feel like a lot of people got in a lot of trouble because they just didn't understand it. And then, um, oh, where was the last place? I think it's residualbulldog.com slash uh, webinar dash registration. We host a webinar, live webinar every Thursday at noon. So if they just go there, they'll, they'll find the link to the actual Thursday webinar. But I do it live so that way I can answer questions every, every Thursday at noon central. So, I mean, just to leave your audience with something they can take away, it's don't be afraid. Put yourself in uncomfortable situations and just do that over and over again until they get more comfortable. And, and they will. So the more times you can just take that consistent action, you will improve and just, you know, keep your eye on the prize, keep your eye on the finish line and what it is that's truly important to you. One of the big things that, you know, I had, I had to make a big decision recently in my business, like a really a pretty big decision. I was going to burn some bridges along the way and I understood that, but I had to think about my priorities and where are my priorities going in the future in this world. And my priorities lie with my family, my wife, my kids. So the decisions I made had to do with you know, the future income that was going to come back to the family, plus the time freedom it was going to allow me to spend more time with them. So, you know, align your future vision, your goals, your perfect day with your priorities, and then just, just go take the steps. You don't, it's not a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. You just got to get through it. So one step at a time. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much for your time, Dan. Hey, thanks for having me on, Dave. This is fun. All right, yeah, thank you for all the value you drop, and I appreciate your being here with all of us today. Thank you, and I see everybody next time on the next episode. Bye-bye. All right, thanks.